we can argue about what's causing it, but the, the Arctic ice is retreating, and there's going to be more and more traffic and more and more competition for natural resources in the Arctic, and, uh, and so there's that piece of it. The Arctic is opening up to more human activity, and so in that respect, Alaska is, is the only place in the United States that touches the Arctic that is in the Arctic, so we need to be concerned from that respect. Then you look at where Alaska sits on the globe and the fact that the forces we have stationed up here can get to most, play, most hot spots in the world quicker than forces we have in the lower 48 based on where we sit on top of the globe and the ranges and the distances. Uh, it's, it's an immensely important strategic location. We all have the responsibility with all the resources that we have to, to keep an eye on our airspace. So the, the airspace off our shores uh, to be able to have indications if anyone is approaching that airspace that, that's unknown uh, or, or potentially hostile. Um, and then to be able to provide warning and also to be able to uh, intercept or interdict those aircraft uh, should it become necessary. These red stars date back to the 1980s. They stand for every time we've done an intercept of uh, mostly Russian aircraft. So the, the stars uh, say the location, the type of aircraft we've intercepted, and the date. Uh, that's the preponderance of the stars on the wall. We also have some stars that have eagles on them, and the eagles represent every time we've intercepted an aircraft that has been squawking a, a hijack squawk. There are a lot of similarities between our facility and a fire department. Uh, we do sleep here just like the fire department does. You know, we're always on duty. The, the only difference there is, you know, they're on duty prepared to go put out a fire, whereas we're on duty to launch on aircraft and possibly go intercept either a Russian military aircraft or even a commercial hostile aircraft. They are prepared to scramble very quickly and on virtually no notice, our airmen go to work. You know, the horn goes off, it's instant job satisfaction. Crew chiefs and, and weapons loaders get out there, arm the aircraft. You know, in a matter of minutes, the pilots are airborne. And then they'll be airborne in time to interdict that, that aircraft. So the Russians will, they, they definitely keep us ready. They keep us on our toes. Uh, they do like to fly and basically test the waters with us. Over the bow, right turn, over the bow. We intercept on average about 10 aircraft a year. Our airspace extends to 12 nautical miles from land, and they don't get within that 12 nautical miles, but because of how big Alaska is, we can't wait to intercept them when they come into that 12 nautical miles. So we will go out there, intercept them in a time and space of our choosing, and just let them know we're there, and that we see them, and that it's time for them to go home. Sovereignty is, is, is our most fundamental right when, when you think about a military responsibility to, to, to protect our homeland. You know, our sovereign airspace is really somewhat sacred. And so it really, when I go out to the alert cell or I go down to the air defense squadron and I see these, in many cases, very young airmen responsible for these multi-million dollar aircraft and, uh, and what they represent from the perspective of the sovereignty of our nation, it just, you know, it warms your heart because they embrace this mission. I mean, they are all over it. Uh, they understand the importance of it.